JGT. What's up, what buddy? up, bro? How you doing, J Head? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm about to pull the B man and jump to the bed here in just a little bit. No, I, I know you are. Up. You're in the Eastern Time Zone too, right? Yeah, man. But that's okay. After Jeez. It, it, <clears throat> Thanks for you staying know, up with us, bro. Absolutely. Wanted to jump into the chat tonight. How's it been? Uh, how's it been on the drain? Not good. Um, I, I can only speak for me right now, but I'm uh, 30 points to LSU. The fucking stings, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I feel uh, like that's a lot. It does. And look, if it didn't sting, that would mean that everybody had become completely empathetic. Uh, and that's not where you want to be as a program. So it's good that people feel emotion. It's good that people are angry, but I'm going to be honest, Jay, this is kind of what I expected to happen. Realistically, this is the definition of a rebuild. You're going to have weeks that you're going to look really good or improved, and you're going to have weeks that you're going to move backwards. And this was one of those weeks where you move backwards. It's, that's not acceptable. It's not something that Auburn people should accept as a standard. But in year one of a, of a complete rebuild, this is where you find yourself because the talent level is just not where it needs to be for consistency uh, and, and to play you got to think of the amount of the emotion those kids played with against Georgia. And you just knew going into Baton Rouge, they weren't going to be able to carry that. Um, and it was a recipe for disaster tonight because the matchup just wasn't there. LSU's wide receivers against, you know, our secondary minus Jalen Simpson, that's a complete mismatch. Their defensive line is legit. Um, and our quarterback play was horrendous tonight. So oh, it just – kind of is what it is my man it, it, it's unfortunate but that's just kind of how it goes what what do you think is the solution at quarterback going forward because i thought they were better with robbie but like is peyton does he have to be bad all the time i don't know and look peyton's worst games have come on the road it, it it's been true here at auburn and it was true at michigan state if you go back and kind of look at his chronological history of, of playing um, minus maybe one or two games at Michigan State. He was not a good performer on the road there either. Mm. So I'm not exactly sure what Hugh's going to do. I'm with you. I thought tonight that the offense had a little more juice with Robbie in the mix. And I know it's going to sound like blasphemy to some people and they're probably booing me in the chat as we speak. <laughs> but because uh, um, Rob, Robbie's kind of a lightning rod, right? You know, but it is what it is. And I, and I did think tonight he gave us a little bit more pop on offense. I tend to believe that Hughes' offense, when it's truly clicking, needs a dual threat quarterback to accentuate all the strong parts of the offense. Um, and while Peyton is more athletic than certain people would want to give him credit for, I think at this point you kind of have to lean into your strength, and that is the running game. And Robbie definitely gives you more there as far as that goes. But, look, tonight it just – it kind of just showed us where we are from a talent standpoint. I didn't think the offensive game plan was great. Uh, just – it never really got into a flow. And then from the defensive side of things, it just – look, it was a complete mismatch. LSU's got the best offense in the entire SEC, and it's really not even all that close. Uh, you're playing in their house. They're up on emotion after winning a big game against Missouri a week ago. And you're coming out of a bye, and you came out flat. And that's just a recipe for disaster, my man. Yeah, and that was a disaster. That first quarter was so bad. That's the thing. You're coming off an off week, and then your first quarter is so bad. I, I feel like that's just super demoralizing. That's just me, though. It It is, and I do think that people made a little too much out of the bye week coming off of a bye. Um, I think sometimes you get stale, specifically when you go on the road coming out of a bye. When you get a game at home coming out of a bye, people tend to respond a little bit better. The crowd gets the juice flowing, everything else. Um, and I do expect us to play significantly better against Ole Miss. In fact, I love that matchup next week much more so than I like this matchup mm. uh, tonight. So I think we'll Specifically because it's at home? Do you think home makes a big difference, right? I think home makes a significant difference. I also like the way that – the matchup, I don't think Ole Miss's receivers are nearly as dynamic as LSU's. I think what Lane has done is tempo people and be able to use uh, timely play calls with, in running situations where he's been able to run things and hit RPO plays, play action. But they, their wide receiver core doesn't scare me nearly as much as, as LSU's does. 
And I think Jordan Hare will be electric in that game um, and, and kind of create some confusion for, for Ole Miss on offense. So I do think we can muddy the water somewhat there. And I'm not a huge fan of Ole Miss's defense either. I, I think that they can be exposed and taken advantage of. So we'll see if we can't pick our shots a little bit better there. But I agree with a lot of what D. Lucky said on tonight. You know, this is a scrappy, plucky bunch that has got some guys that have probably played above their heads in spots. Uh, but you just don't have the layered depth of talent that you need to go on the road in the SEC and play a team like LSU. Yeah. Now, can we be better than losing by 30 points? Absolutely, we can. Did I expect us to win this game tonight and probably to lose by double digits? I did. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to say, but it just kind of that's where the talent is on this team right now. And the only thing you're going to do to improve that is to continue to grind and chip away and develop what you do have on your roster. And in the off season, talent acquisition has to be the number one thing, and that yeah. goes with high school, JUCO, and the portal. It, it can't be one phase; it's got to be layered talent across the board. And they got to rethink everything. I think every position ought to be wide open when they go into the off season. That's my opinion. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, right now, you know, I, we get asked on the show that I do with Jay Lee routinely, "Do you think Peyton's the guy? Do you think Robbie's the guy?" Well, I basically say that I think it's TBD. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that position is under review until the end of the season, and then we'll make a determination when we get there of whether one of those two guys can carry us moving forward. Um, but you're not wrong to say that across the board. I mean, with the exception of what Jalen Simpson and Marcus Harris, Eugene Asante, I think every other position should be up for grabs. Yeah. Um, and that's really where we are. It, Rivaldo Fairweather's done some good things. I, I think the offensive line has been better. I honestly do. I, I would agree with been, that. Uh, yeah. I think they've been an improvement from last year. But, you know, it just – you got to raise the floor. That's that's the thing. Right now the floor is far too low in certain spots in this roster, and the ceiling's not quite high enough. And it's going to be a few years before we get there, but I think you're going to start to see improvement. We're getting to a part in the schedule where you've got your hardest games behind you now, minus Alabama. You get an opportunity to get a big win at home against Ole Miss. You've got Mississippi State. Doesn't necessarily scare me if you can avoid an emotional letdown coming out of Ole Miss. You get Vanderbilt on the road who doesn't scare you. Arkansas is tough there in Fayetteville, but that's not a game you can – it is unthinkable that you win. Then you get New Mexico State. So this is really where your season is going to be made, Jay. And I said before the season I thought 7-5 and five was where we'd land. I still think that's all on the table. And if you can go seven and five with a top ten recruiting class, you will have done exactly what you needed to do in this season to make it a success, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely, I agree with you one hundred percent. And there were some people asking earlier, Jay Head, like, does a loss like this affect Auburn in a recruiting perspective? I don't think it does. I'd be interested to hear your opinion on that. I don't think it does because look, recruiting is sales, right? Like. <clears throat> If I'm Hugh Freeze or I'm anybody else on that this assistant coach on that staff, I'm still using the same pitch that you used two weeks ago when it was the Georgia game. If we had you, the outcome would have been different. Look, these kids, you're selling playing time, you're selling NIL, you're selling coming in and creating your own brand and being able to, you know, create your own legacy. That's the pitch in year one for most coaches when you're in the middle of a rebuild. That's the way Saban did it when he got to Alabama. And look, I know it's blasphemy to you know talk about Alabama football coaches on a uh, on a brain drain, but that's just kind of a baseline for how you go about it. When you're trying to upgrade the talent at every spot on your roster, you're letting guys know that everything's up for grabs, that there's nothing submitted with the current people, and you can create your own legacy and be a part of something special. And so the recruiting pitch stays the same. Now it may hurt you in spots. You know, there may be a battle or two that you, you know, you got on the board where it might hurt you a little bit. Yeah. But overall, no, I, I don't think that it does. Not in year one. If this were the end of year two, and you're taking a loss like this, or even in year three, where people are able to negatively recruit you um, and talk about your trajectory and your future, absolutely, it hurts you. Um, but not right now. Yeah, you, you still say we need you, and here's why. Right. Yeah. That's right. It. We need you. Here's why. It's year one. This is our first year everything's going to be different moving forward. So there's a little bit more buy-in and there's, you know, parents, other influencers around certain recruitments, they tend to understand 
year one dynamics. And look, kids aren't affected in the same way by loss that adults are. And that's what I've learned more about recruiting in the last probably two years than at any other time. Kids see the game a little bit differently. They see a way that they could have influenced or made it different or made it better. Adults or fans like us, you know, or not, you're not a fan, you're a journalist, but fans like myself, you know what I mean? You can't, you tend to harp on the negative and view it in that light or that, or through that prism. Kids see it in a completely different way. Yeah, I agree. They're kind of looking at it in the short term. They always do. Absolutely. That's what it means to be a kid, bro. <laughs> it, it does. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Especially in today's day and age, right? Like, yeah. try getting a kid to sit through an entire football game with you without staring at TikTok or playing on their phone, man. Jesus, it's just you know, it's it's a different breed these days, dude. The attention span's not the same as what bro, I'm getting. I got at. people my age that can't do that. Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, I, got, I got friends that do the same thing, man. Exactly, dude. But it's just. It's a different deal these days, man. And, and like I said, kids are not going to look at this two weeks from now. I'm like, oh, my God, what about Auburn losing, you know what I mean, by 30 points? Yeah. If Auburn pulls off an old, an upset against Ole Miss, they're going to be talking about what, you know what I mean, it was like rolling tumors corner and being in the middle of mass chaos. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, can Auburn be in the moment next week? That's really what it is. It needs to go week to week from here on out. Can we stay in the moment enough to play and be competitive in each and every game that we've got moving forward to the Iron Bowl? And we, can we continue to pick up and accrue talent in this recruiting class to improve the overall floor and ceiling of what our roster can be? That's that that that's all there is to it. Period. Pretty much. That that that's where it's at. It's year one. It's a rebuild. I know people. This is going to sting. I know people are going to be upset. I know people are going to be on the bunker or in the drain. And they're just pissed, dude. And I get it. You know what I mean? I understand. That's what being a fan's all about. You know what I mean? Because you live for this for you know nine months out of the year or you get it for three months and then it's a crap product. And I understand Auburn fans are sick and tired of it, dude. They are absolutely tired of walking into games like this and not being competitive. I know. It sucks. So it does, but I, I just tend, I look, I'm a little bit of an optimist. I think we all know that, but I think if you think that this is what the product's going to be next year or even in year three, then you're probably looking at it from a little bit different lens than me and the way this coaching staff views it as well. Word. That's the truth right there, Jay head. So I'm talking about, well, (laughs) I think you said it all. Jay head. Uh, Love you, brother. All right. Hey, listen, man, you, you went the distance with us tonight, bro. This is late for you. I mean, you're in the Eastern time zone, so it's late, bro. Eastern time zone with a four-year-old, bro, so it's, it, it's significantly late, man. Wait, hold on. I, I got a 22-year-old. T- wait, that's the same, right? No, wait. I'm yeah, well, see, she's, com- she's coming in at 6 a.m. when mine's waking up at 6 a.m. Yeah, you're right about up. that, man. You're telling me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. We'll check you next week. Thanks for giving us some time, J-Head. We love you, bro. I love you too, buddy. Talk to you later. See you, man. Bye.